He is known for his commentary on Peter Lombard's sentences, which gained him recognition in the field of philosophy and theology. He is recognized for writing two apologies in response to criticisms of his commentary, showcasing his intellectual prowess. His name is John of Myrcourt. Very little is known about the life of John of Myrcourt, a philosopher who lived in the 14th century. He was born in Myrcourt, a town located in the region of Lorraine, France, between 1310 to 1315. John's intellectual journey led him to become a lecturer at the prestigious Cistercian College of St. Bernard in Paris, where he gained recognition for his philosophical and theological expertise. One of John's notable contributions was his commentary on Peter Lombard's Sentences, a significant theological work of the time. However, his commentary received criticism, prompting John to write two apologies in response to the various objections raised against his work. In his writings, he explained the meanings behind his propositions, defending his philosophical stance. Despite his efforts to clarify his ideas, John faced condemnation. The Faculty of Theology at the University of Paris, acting upon the recommendation of Robert of Bardas, the university chancellor, condemned 41 propositions derived from John's writings on the sentences. Undeterred, John wrote a second apology, hoping to rectify the situation. However, his efforts were in vain, as he was censured by Pope Clement VI in 1347. The reasons behind John's censure remain unclear, with some speculating that it could have been influenced by scholarly jealousy and academic politics. After his censure, no further information about John of Myrcourt is available, including the date of his death. His story serves as a reminder of the challenges faced by philosophers and scholars in navigating intellectual debates and the complex dynamics of academic environments. Despite the uncertainty surrounding his life and legacy, John's contributions to philosophy and theology continue to intrigue and inspire scholars to this day. John of Myrcourt, a philosopher known for his unique perspectives on knowledge and existence, believed in two kinds of certain knowledge, the principle of non-contradiction and the immediate intuition of one's existence. These forms of knowledge, according to Myrcourt, were the most undeniable and formed the basis for analytic judgments. Myrcourt distinguished between two types of evidence for these forms of knowledge, special and natural. Special evidence derived from the principle of non-contradiction, while natural evidence was acquired through empirical means. However, Myrcourt considered natural evidence to be weaker than special evidence due to his belief in an all-powerful God who could produce miracles. Controversially, Myrcourt argued that everything, both physical and moral, depended entirely on the free will of God. This perspective challenged the commonly accepted notion of an all-good God, as Myrcourt believed that even actions considered immoral were willed by God. He further claimed that certain temptations, such as resisting the urge to commit adultery, required a miracle from God to overcome. One of Myrcourt's notable contributions was his exploration of the concept of the infinite. He posited that God possessed the highest degree of perfection, while all other creatures were infinitely distant from him. Myrcourt contended that measuring perfections was impossible due to the infinite gap between them and God, leaving only the knowledge that different species surpassed or fell short of each other in a scale of perfections. Although Myrcourt is often associated with nominalism and seen as a follower of William Ockham, he departed from Ockham's views on imperfect intuitive cognition. However, both philosophers agreed on the importance of intuitive cognition as the foundation of knowledge and emphasized the close connection between cognition and its object. Myrcourt's philosophical development was influenced by notable thinkers such as Nicholas of Ottercourt, William Ockham, and possibly Gregory of Rimini and Thomas Bradwardine. While nominalism was prevalent during Myrcourt's time, he was particularly drawn to the radical nominalist ideas of Nicholas of Ottercourt, who faced persecution and was compelled to burn his writings. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.